represent this, you know, T, X, Y, Z. But most space times have this spherical symmetry. So, you know, it's like it's symmetric all over. So there's like a sphere and it's just symmetric around the sphere. It has this type of spherical symmetry. So what we do is we use spherical coordinates. So we kind of draw. So instead of having this as like X, Z, X, Y, we can now have theta, the angle of theta, R, and then we have this, this displacement. So we have this, this part, which is just R sine theta d phi. So now we have two angles and a radius describing, describing this three-dimensional space. So we can just make the transformations. The transformations look like this. So you know, if we just take the differential of z, really it's just dr cosine theta minus r sine theta d theta. And if we do this for all the coordinates, what we end up getting is we just get ds squared is just so time doesn't change plus dr plus r squared d phi plus r squared sine phi d theta. So now our flat metric, we could rewrite it as this. So negative one, one, r squared, r squared sine theta. This is how we write our spherically symmetric flat metric. So now I want to just give you an example before, before we end things about one, one space time in particular. And this is the geometry that encapsulates this space time. Okay, so upon first glance, if B goes to zero, this just looks like the flat metric. But because there's an existence, because B exists in this, in this, um, in this metric, a lot of interesting properties happen. So, and we'll see. So in general relativity, or when we're dealing with higher dimensional space, what a good procedure is, or how, how we could get the details of higher dimensional space so this is a four dimensional space. So what we could do is we could take a 2D slice of 4D space, a 4D curved space, a four dimensional curved space. And we could embed this 2D slice in three dimensional flat space. And we can look at its properties. Just like how a sphere is two-dimensional embedded in 3D flat space. So now, when we're doing this, like let's let, let's just see how we're going to do this. So t is constant, so it's constant in time. So t is just constant. So now we're left with ds squared equals dr squared plus b squared. Now we're left with this space time, three dimensions. So now we want to reduce this to two dimensions. So because we have the sine theta, we don't want to lose any information. So we could say we could set theta equal to pi over two. This is called an equatorial slice. So we're gonna, we're gonna take we're gonna slice this space time at theta equals two, theta equals pi over two. We just rewrite this as a surface. Sigma dr squared plus b squared plus r squared. So what's nice about this surface is that we could take phi to a phi plus a constant. And then this metric remain unchanged. So d phi goes to d phi still. So this is an actually symmetric space time. So this makes embedding it in three dimensional space easier because we could just say, okay, now we could, we could just put this because of this, this property, because of this actual symmetry, we could say we could embed it in 
uh, three-dimensional space-time that's actually symmetric, which could be the cylindrical coordinates, so cylindrical space-time. So, so we can look at this ds squared equals, so d rho squared plus rho squared d phi squared, so this is the angle, plus dz squared. So this is, this is three dimensions representing cylindrical coordinates. So our goal is now to make this look like this. So we, we want to express this two dimensional metric in three dimensional, with like re rewriting this in three dimensions using this. So first thing, so we can just define rho to so upon initial glance to be a function of r and phi. Z, just a function of R and phi, and this psi, just a function of R and phi as well. So now, because of this axial symmetry, we just say phi equals, or psi equals phi. So now we could reduce down our parameters to having rho and z just depend on R. Okay. So, like I said, our goal is to make this metric look like this one. So how we could do that is we could say, you know, ds squared is d rho over dr squared plus dz over dr squared times dr squared plus rho d, now we set phi equal to phi, so we could have this. So in order for this to match up with here, this factor must equal one. And then we already know rho, we could just substitute rho squared equals b squared plus r squared. So now we just get the differential equation, d rho dr. So substituting this into here, we could get a function of z. And you could check this with Mathematica, like this with Mathematica, so we get z over r. So what we end up getting is we get b arc cinch r over b. Now we want to write it in these coordinates completely, rho, z, and phi. So we want to get rid of r. So the first thing we do is we want to write this in terms of r. So we divide b by both sides. Take the arc take the r cinch, so just get cinch z b equals r b times both sides by b to get rid of that. Now we just have an expression for r. Now we can plug it back in here and solving for rho we get b squared plus b squared cinch zb, pull out the b squared, we get 1 plus cinch zb squared, and all that is is hyperbolic cosine. Now, let's see what this looks like when we plot it. So, we're going to plot this function. So, so rho over b. So, on this axis, it's going to be z over b. This axis is going to be rho over b. If we so we could start it where r is equal to zero, and this is just a distance b. And now we draw the cosinus function, where this is just r equals three b. Is 
5b, r equals negative 5b. So now we said this 2d surface is actually symmetric. So we take this slice and we rotate it 2 pi on the other side. So still looking at this from this diagram, we have something that looks like this. And if you want to picture this in a three-dimensional view, it looks like this. So now, if you see for large R, over here, we get back where if you go out for large R, so for large R there's flat space, and when you get close to this, this position, you start experiencing this curvature due to B. So if B isn't there, this, this gap wouldn't exist. So if B goes to zero, this gap wouldn't exist, and there's two flat space times. So an observer can keep walking, thinking it's in flat space, thinking it's in flat space, thinking it's in flat space, go through this bridge into another flat space. So what this is called, this is called a wormhole. And this is just a portal, pretty much just a portal between two flat universes. So, so this, is, this is the way to think of it. So that's, that's what this metric describes. And when they pass through here, this is called the throat of the wormhole. And that's just a two, we could represent this by a two sphere, two dimensional sphere, with the with radius B and circumference two pi B. So now when we look at this, does there any questions? Okay, so now when we look at this, so each, each point in the space time could be represented by a two sphere. So, which is larger and larger radius. So now, and once we get into the flatter re regions, you know, we're gonna have like really big, big circles representing this, this space time. So this is a... Uh, the two universes are not disjoint. Can you communicate between the two? You can walk through this wormhole, yeah, yeah, yeah. And come back also. Yes. So, we, we can cross there and uh, like shortcut. Hmm? We, we can shortcut. 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 I see. Can you jump? You jump, jump to the, the verb to body. Well, well then, so, so this, so this is, so this is just space time. So this, so, so what we're doing, so this is just space time. But you know it's curved in such. Okay, so 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 think of it as like this. So we're walking, and then there's just a sphere. This is called like the throat of the wormhole. There's just a sphere right here, and we just step into the sphere and go into another universe. So yeah, so we're we're pretty much. It, it's kind of like it, so th th this is. So these embedding diagrams are not, not good in the sense where it's just like, oh, you know, like th this isn't like, oh, like, you know, like it's experiencing a gravitational attraction. Like, you know, it's not like a well. This is just so 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 this this is where kind of these embedding diagrams kind of fail us in intuition, because it's not like, oh, there's this spatial, it's not like this hole where like we jump through and then you know end up, you know, gravity pulls us in the other side. Like, no, it's more of a like I said, like this this wormhole is just a two sphere. It's just at the throat, at the throat of it, it's just a two-dimensional sphere that we walk through. Do we ever know the difference between the two? Um, between the two universes? Well, hmm, that's a good question. I mean, you might not see your friends and family in the other universe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there might be strange looking people. Um, so another, how, how do you know other people? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Some strange looking beings. So I guess so you could also have wormholes in the same universe. But what happens? So in order for this wormhole to be stable, you need negative energy. So in order to have this, this wormhole stable, this bridge must consist of negative energy. And we saw a glimpse of it during when we were doing quantum field theory, like our, our
a small section in quantum field theory, the Casimir effect, so the, the attraction between two plates is reliant on this principle in the universe, delta E, delta T, is the H bar over two. So, and because energy, so, so this means that there's like a fluctuation both in negative and positive energy. So, about negative energy, we'll talk about this more once we get into quantum field theory. But because this is a quantum effect, and you can you can end up at another point in space and time. What's up? Oh, I, you don't have a question. No. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is a. Uh, so what was I about to say? Oh, so okay. So, so in order for this, so in order to have a wormhole in our universe, we just need a. So this needs to be really small. So this could happen at like a quantum level, where negative energy, where negative energy contributes, but. And we, so it will be hard to have this much negative energy collected in, in this, this real space. But, um, so.